Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I'm Peter Gross, co-host of the original Wild Kingdom with Marlon Perkins and Jim Fowler. If there's one thing we've learned when filming Wild Kingdom, it's that nature can be harsh. Not all animals are strong and healthy enough to survive. In tonight's episode, we'll explore the relationship between predator and prey. Each plays an important role in keeping animal populations in check. The old and the sickly animals are naturally weeded out, leaving the strong and the healthy to produce the next generation. In fact, predators are only successful about 50% of their attempts to catch food. This reality can seem harsh, but it's absolutely necessary to create that delicate yet natural balance of the animals in the wild kingdom. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. In the wild kingdom, to challenge the big cat is to invite sudden death. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. From Chicago's famed Lincoln Park Zoo, here is Marlon Perkins. Hello. Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I want you to see a wonderful face. What do you see there? Do you see cunning? Intelligence? Do you see a friendly house pet? Do you see a fierce, crafty predator who would make a kill? without even batting an eye? You may see all of these in the fine face of this bobcat because cats, more than almost any other animal, create different feelings in different people. To me, cats are in a class all by themselves. They're superior to man in their strength, their agility, and in their natural weapons. And I think they're very intelligent animals. Let me give you an example of the intelligence of a lion that we saw in the Kruger National Park in South Africa when we were on safari a couple of years ago. The lions in that park have learned to hunt with the aid of an automobile. They actually follow right alongside of the car so that they can't be seen by antelope that are feeding up ahead. And then when the car gets close enough, they leave the car, make a sudden dash out forward, and make their kill. We've seen a demonstration of cat intelligence. Now let's take a look at their physical characteristics. Would you want to come with me over here to the table? And let's take a look at your claws. Here, you can have something to eat here. Oh, over here, you missed it. And while you're doing that, would you let me take your foot and put out your claw? I think you're too hungry to do that. Well, all right, that's the way you feel. Excuse me just a minute. Jim. Yes, Marla. Jim, would you please bring in the Margate cat? Sure will. I'll put a collar on first, though. Cats have... Uh, very interesting teeth in three categories. The little teeth in front here are teeth designed for holding. The tearing and killing teeth are the great big long canines that come out here and they're their little daggers or weapons that actually penetrate and tear and kill. Then back behind there are cutting teeth for, that act like scissors for shearing off pieces of meat in bite sizes. Jim, I was trying to show the claws of the bobcat here, and uh, she wasn't quite gentle enough. Do you think the little Margay would let you extend so. the claws? Let's, I can sure try. Let's All see. Right. Oh, now. These cats don't know each other very well. Look at over here. You can hold Marlon, these, she's putting these out very well. Look at this now when I press them. Oh, yes. Well, now those are the claws 
for holding and tearing, the claws that they use to capture their prey, and they're so designed that they will, the harder the prey tries to get away, the tighter those claws embed. Yeah. They also use them in self-defense for tearing and pulling both the front feet and the hind feet. In order to see a little bit better and more clearly the uh, claw and tooth action of cats, let's go into the laboratory uh, where we can see that with another kind of cat, but I'll need to take my boxing glove along. While Jim's taking care of the Marga and the Bobcat, I'd like to demonstrate how a cat uses its weapons. This is a golden cat from Southeast Asia. Cats are efficient predators not only because of their outstanding weapons such as their teeth and their claws, but also because of their great strength and agility. Many small cats such as the Margay spend much of their time in trees searching for prey. This calls for great agility. They hunt in the trees at night and are helped by their large eyes and, oddly enough, these long whiskers. Their whiskers are tactile organs and extend beyond the width of their body. This allows a cat in total darkness to pass through any opening that's as wide as his whiskers. Jim, do you think we can verify that with Roger the Tiger? We can if we can hold him still that long. Oh, Roger. <coughs> hold still. Let's, let's measure. Roger, Calper's right here. Hold your face, Roger. Good boy, Roger. Oh, my! Oh. Roger. Let's well, that was nine inches. Measure me right across here. That's good. That a boy, Roger. That's fine. Let's see, that's seven and a half. Roger, any cat can misbehave, Roger. He would have no trouble. No, he wouldn't. No, you'd have an inch and a half clearance. Good. Well, even with sensitive whiskers, sharp claws, sure-footedness, and agility, and good nighttime vision, a cat may occasionally fall from a tree. And I can show you why. There, little kitty cat. You help me now for just a minute. I want to show something remarkable. Here, now, you ready? Here we go. There. That's a remarkable example of agility. And now, once more, I'd like to have you see that in slow motion. This ability to always land upright must give cats an added confidence when they're hunting in trees in total darkness. If this little tiger were in the wild kingdom, his stripes would be important to him as camouflage to blend him in with the dark shadows of the bamboo thickets and the tall grass. Let me show you where tigers live by this map here. You put your feet right up on the shelf there. Just hold still for a minute. You won't fall. Yeah, that's all right. Tigers have a very wide range in Asia, from Siberia clear on down to India, and then down to the Malay, even to Sumatra. Tigers don't occur in Africa at all, but over there, their place is taken by the lion. Lions live in the open plains area where their tony solid brown coloring blend with the scenery and camouflage them as they prey upon the great herds of grazing animals. <laughs> okay, you better take off, young fella. You're getting too nervous. You want me to help you down? Here, come on. There you go. Right on down. <laughs> Leopards have a very wide range throughout Asia and Africa, where they're often found in trees.
King of the jungle in Central and South America is the jaguar, who preys on a number of animals. On an expedition to the Amazon River region, I photographed a jaguar killing a giant boa constrictor. It's a natural thing for one animal to hunt and kill another. And cats are one of the most efficient checks on maintaining the balance of nature. There are several cats native to North America, the bobcat, the lynx, and the famous puma. One of our wildlife photographers and I spent quite a bit of time photographing a family of puma in the mountains of Colorado. This is puma country rugged and hilly. We spotted our first puma prowling along a stream bed. To me, it was a beautiful sight to see. But to the early settlers traveling west, the sight of this six-foot package of feline dynamite must certainly have been terrifying. make their dens in caves and crevices. So we moved our cameras on up to where we could command a broad view of the surrounding country. Being downwind and behind the rocks, our presence didn't seem to disturb the big cats. Several of them passed by and gave us a marvelous opportunity to study their graceful but powerful movements. Then I spotted a female I hoped was heading for her den. The records show that pumas seldom attack men, but just the same, I was mighty glad there was a wide ravine between me and this one, especially when it turned out that she really was a mother returning to her kittens. Although a puma father takes his domestic responsibilities rather lightly, the mother may stay with her kittens for a full year. Mother, of course, is the hunter. And she's a big game hunter, too. Deer and elk are her natural prey. She also goes after sheep, horses, and cattle, which turn farmers and ranchers into hunters hunting her but she also goes after smaller game. One of our cameras was trained on this marmot, which is a kind of a ground squirrel. And we were fortunate here to be able to record a fantastic study of animal behavior. The puma with its superb sense of smell and hearing was stealing up on the marmot. The marmot also has keen senses. It tried to make a run for the safety of its burrow, but the cat was too swift. And once the puma got inside the marmot's escape zone, the marmot had no choice but to stand up to her. It looks like an uneven match, all right, but the marmot has razor-like teeth that can inflict a terrible cut. So, tense and alert, the puma waits until she can make sure of her strike. Puma carries her prize back to the kittens in the den. Late in the
in the summer, the younger generation of pumas are leaving their dens and exploring the world. Come fall, they're ranging farther from home, traveling up to as much as 20 miles. By winter, they may be ready to do a little hunting on their own. With many animals in hibernation, food becomes scarce at times. But a rabbit is always fair game. enemy, the puma reigns supreme here as king of the pass. It was a wonderful experience for me watching that puma family secure and comfortable there in their wild kingdom. There's a lot of difference in looks between this little lion and those young pumas. Yeah, this African lion's a little bigger at this age yeah. too. I'll go get the tiger ready. Well, be a little careful with him, Jim. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> The cat family is well known for taking care of its own. If this little guy were out in the wild kingdom with his mother, she'd go out and hunt food for him, protect him with her life, and generally watch out for him. Here in the zoo where we raise baby cats in the nursery away from their parents, we have a splendid opportunity to study their natural or instinctive reactions. We do this by placing them in a special observation cage in our laboratory and then presenting them with objects that they've never seen before. Jim, let's test that little tiger's reaction to a toy animal. I've just about got this toy rigged up, Marlon. I think this one will work. All right, Roger. I'm going to take these away and see what you do with that one, huh? This five-month-old tiger shows a natural instinct to attack the little toy monkey. We call this play, but this action is really preparation for young tigers for the more serious hunting and killing when they get older. We're going to replace the tiger now with two snow leopards and two jaguars that are about two and a half months old. They're all set now, Marlon. These little fellows would never meet in the wild state. Snow leopards come from the high cold country of Asia, while jaguars come from tropical America. So it'll be interesting to see what their reaction will be to each other. The lighter colored ones are snow leopards, 
and the darker ones are jaguars. They're all about 10 weeks old. But notice that the jaguars seem to be more alert and aggressive. This may be because they're born with their eyes open and mature a little faster. Whoops, there he goes. These snow leopards are very rare. Only a few have ever been born in captivity. What a roughhouse. So jaguars are instinctively aggressive at this early age. And this verifies my previous experience with jaguars. Now I'd like to conduct an interesting experiment with a pair of lion cubs. We're going to show them some objects that they have never seen before and see their reaction. I got too many cats back here. Can you take this oh, one? Oh, sure. Let me hold her. Hey, what happened to your shirt? Oh, that little tiger got me. Hmm. Well, I'm going to put you in the cage here from the other side, and you can join your brother. Well, I think we can conclude that the female was certainly the more aggressive of this pair. And this isn't surprising because in the wild state, it's the female who nearly always makes the kill. Lions are far and away the most sociable of the big cats. While other cats travel alone or even in pairs, lions move about in family groups called prides. They even share their prey with one another. I think it's interesting that the males eat first, while the females and the cubs hold back, even though it's the females that make the kill. When a lioness has made a kill, the pride moves in and feeds right on the spot. Almost always, they're accompanied by the scavengers of the wild kingdom, vultures, jackals, hyenas, waiting to move in and clean up on anything that's left. When the males are satisfied, the cubs and the females eat their fill. After this, the lions may not make a kill for several days, for the king of beasts isn't a really bloodthirsty animal. He never kills just for fun, only to live. If we raised these young cats here at the zoo until they became adults, and then released them into the wilds of Africa or Asia, do you think they could take care of themselves? Of course, much depends on the individual animal and its personality. But each one has the weapons, the strength, and the agility, and the natural instinct to make it one of the world's great predators. Its survival would really depend on how carefully it was introduced to its new environment, and whether or not it, had, it was accepted by its own kind. As we work with these wonderful creatures here at the zoo, we realize that of all the animals that dwell on the land, cats are supreme. Truly, the cats of the world are the masters of the wild kingdom.
Like what you saw? Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube for more exclusive content. And visit our website at wildkingdom.com.